Hey everybody, uh, my name is Ben Goto and I'm the lead maintainer of the Mailspring email client. Um, just following up with the video that was requested in this um, for this OAuth app verification request. Um, in this video, I'm going to show how the Mailspring application uh, uses the restricted scopes that we requested um, and also give you a demo of the OAuth flow. Um, so I think Previously, uh, the Mailspring application had two registered OAuth client IDs. Um, one of those was actually unused, and I went ahead and deleted it. So the only client ID that we'll be looking at today is this one right here. So Mailspring is a desktop email application, and uh, you can kind of think of it as something like Thunderbird, or uh, the UI is a little bit more like Mailbox. Um, the application runs entirely offline. It's, it's on your machine. Uh, MailSync runs on your machine. Um, we actually don't send refresh tokens or access tokens or email passwords to the cloud um, for any kind of account, uh, Gmail included. So right now, uh, I'm going to click Add Account here, and I'll show you what the Google OAuth flow looks like. So I'm presented with this set of options. I'm going to choose Gmail. So this redirects me to uh, a Google OAuth page with the destination as is destination is actually localhost on a custom port. Um, so when I come in here, I'll uh, choose an email account that I haven't linked to Mailspring yet. Um, so now we were redirected back because uh, I'd previously linked this account, so the password wasn't required. Um, it just confirmed that we were able to reach uh, IMAP for that Gmail account uh, and added it in the sidebar here. And you can see the email coming in. Um, and so these, uh, so now we're you know, able to, to use this as a desktop email client for that account. Um, this page that opened here in the background, uh, after the app successfully completes OAuth, um, we do load this, this page in the browser window. Um, mostly because we're actually unable to close the tab completely. Um, so this just tells you, hey, like if it didn't succeed in uh, relaunching the application and transferring you back, uh, you know, please bring it to the foreground. Um, so the OAuth scopes that, uh, that we're requesting, um, userinfo.email, userinfo.profile, uh, the mail.google.com scope allows us to reach uh, Gmail IMAP, and that's the core scope that the application uses to offer uh, its functionality. Um, there are two additional ones that we use, uh, the contacts API, which allows us to provide um, auto completion for people in your Google address book. Um, so you can see here, like these folks are, are being pulled from the Google contacts API. Um, Right now, this is the only uh, address book integration that we have, is at this autocomplete. Um, the plan is, in the near future, to add a dedicated sort of address book window to the app. Um, the final scope here is for calendar. Uh, Mailspring currently has a calendar that you can access under the developer menu here, under calendar preview. Um, we're still actively developing this, and the plan is to launch it later this summer. Uh, and it'll actually be a full-fledged uh, desktop calendar solution similar to uh, the Max, like calendar.app or um, the Outlook calendar on Windows. Uh, so right now we can pull up the calendar preview and uh, it's, a, it's hitting the Google CalDAV server uh, using that calendar scope and showing me all of the events on my calendars here. Um, and I can double click to get information about the events. Uh, and so we're still working on broader calendar integration, uh, but this is how we're currently using the Google Calendar scope. Um, so I think that pretty much sums it up. Um, if you have any additional questions, I'm more than happy to, to email back and forth about it or make another video. Um, it's worth, worth mentioning that Mailspring is entirely a desktop application. Um, so the refresh tokens and access tokens and passwords and, and things like that, uh, as well as user data, user email data, 
um, never leave their computers. Uh, you can actually see the, the keychain on the Mac here stores the passwords inside of this uh, Mailspring entry. Um, and uh, the only bits of information that we send to the cloud to provide the service are uh, things like the snooze dates, which we don't have a good way to store in IMAP. Um, cool. So, all right. Let me know if you have any more questions. Thanks so much, guys.